Today we're going to talk about lobes, contact area, and height of contour. First, let's come to lobes. Lobes are the anatomical divisions of a tooth. They are separated by primary grooves. All anterior teeth are composed of four lobes. Out of these, three are the labial lobes and one is the lingual lobe. The three labial lobes are the mesolabial lobe, which is on the mesial side, the middle labial lobe, and the distal labial lobe, which is on the distal side. The one lingual lobe encompasses the cingulum. In the anterior teeth, we have mammalons and developmental depressions. These give us evidence of the presence of labial lobes. Mammalons are rounded incisal terminations of the labial lobes, and there are two shallow depressions in the incisal portion of the labial surface. These are mesolabial and distolabial developmental depressions. In this diagram, you can see the superior or incisal aspect of a maxillary central incisor. And if this is the distal surface and this is the mesial surface, then this is the distolabial lobe, this is the middle labial lobe, this is the mesolabial lobe, and this is the lingual lobe. Here you can see the labial aspect of a maxillary central incisor. These are the developmental depressions. If this is the mesial surface and this is the distal surface, then this is the mesolabial developmental depression and this is the distolabial developmental depression. And here on the incisal edge are the mammalons. Here I have a maxillary central incisor. This is the labial surface. This is a developmental depression and this is a developmental depression. If this is the mesial side and that is the distal side, then this is the mesolabial developmental depression and this is the distolabial developmental depression. Hence, making this the mesolabial lobe, this the middle lobe, and this the distolabial lobe. On the lingual surface, here you can see the cingulum. We all know that the lingual lobe encompasses the cingulum. So this is the lingual lobe. Now let's talk about permanent posterior teeth. When we talk about premolars, except for mandibular second premolar, all exhibit four lobes, three buccal and one lingual. These are mesiobuccal, middle buccal, distobuccal, and lingual lobes. Mandibular second premolar has two lingual cusps, hence two lingual lobes, which are mesiolingual and distolingual lobes. In this diagram, you can see the occlusal aspect of maxillary first premolar. If this is the distal surface and this is the mesial surface, then this is the distobuccal lobe, this is the middle buccal lobe, this is the mesiobuccal lobe, and this is the lingual lobe. Here you can see the developmental depressions. This is the mesiobuccal developmental depression. This is the distobuccal developmental depression. Now let's come to the exception, which is the mandibular second premolar. This is the mesiobuccal developmental depression. This is the distobuccal developmental depression. Hence, this is the mesiobuccal lobe. This is the middle buccal lobe. This is the distobuccal lobe. Now, instead of having one lingual lobe, it has two lingual lobes divided by the lingual groove. So this is the mesiolingual lobe and this is the distolingual lobe. Here I have a maxillary first premolar. This is the mesiobuccal lobe. This is the middle buccal lobe. This is the distobuccal lobe. And this is the lingual lobe. This is the mandibular second premolar. This is the mesiobuccal lobe. This is the middle buccal lobe. And this is the distobuccal lobe. Here I have the lingual groove, making this the mesiolingual lobe. And this is the distolingual lobe. When we talk about maxillary molars, they have four lobes. Two buccal and two lingual. These are mesiobuccal, distobuccal, mesiolingual, and distolingual lobes. There are no facial developmental depressions. The central groove divides the buccal and lingual grooves. The two lingual lobes are separated by the distolingual groove, and the two buccal lobes are divided by the buccal groove. In these diagrams, you can see the occlusal aspect of maxillary first molar. If this is the mesial side and this is the distal side, then this is the mesiobuccal lobe, this is the distobuccal lobe, this is the mesiolingual lobe, and this is the distolingual lobe. Here you can see the buccal groove, and this is the distolingual groove. Here I have a maxillary first molar. This is the mesiobuccal lobe, this is the distobuccal lobe, this is the distolingual lobe, and this is the mesiolingual lobe. Here we have the buccal groove, and this is the distolingual groove. Mandibular first molars have five cusps and five lobes. These are mesiobuccal, distobuccal, distal, mesiolingual, and distolingual lobes. They are separated by the central groove, lingual groove, buccal groove, and distobuccal groove. In these diagrams, you can see the occlusal aspect of mandibular first molar. If this is the mesial side and this is the distal side, then this is the mesiobuccal lobe, this is the distobuccal lobe, this is the distal lobe, this is the mesiolingual lobe and this is the distolingual lobe. Here you can see the central groove, the buccal groove, distobuccal groove and lingual groove. Here I have a mandibular first molar. 
this is the mesiobuccal lobe this is the distobuccal lobe this is the distal lobe this is the mesiolingual lobe this is the distolingual lobe here in orange we have the central groove this is the buccal groove this is the distobuccal groove and this is the lingual groove the rest of the mandibular molars have four cusps and four lobes these are mesiobuccal distobuccal mesiolingual and distolingual lobes they are separated by the central groove buccal groove and lingual groove in this diagram you can see the occlusal aspect of mandibular second molar this is the central groove this is the buccal groove this is the lingual groove this is the mesiobuccal lobe this is the distobuccal lobe this is the mesiolingual lobe and this is the distolingual lobe here i have the mandibular second molar this is the mesial side this is the distal side this is the mesiobuccal lobe this is the distobuccal lobe this is the mesiolingual lobe this is the distolingual lobe here we have the central groove this is the buccal groove and this is the lingual groove in a complete arch each tooth touches two adjacent teeth except for the most posterior one the places where the teeth touch each other are the contact areas these are normally between the mesial surface of one tooth and distal surface of the tooth just anterior to it there is an exception to this central incisors contact each other at the midline and then mesial surface is contacting a mesial surface in this diagram this is a central incisor this is the lateral incisor this is the canine these are the two premolars and these are the three molars the point of contact between them is the contact area this diagram is showing that as we move from an anterior tooth to a posterior one the contact area is moving cervically that is it is moving downwards the height of contour is also called the crest of curvature it is the greatest area of contour on facial surfaces of anterior and posterior teeth the height of contour is the cervical third and on lingual surfaces of anterior teeth the height of contour is the cervical third and on lingual surfaces of posterior teeth the height of contour is the middle or occlusal third in this diagram you can see the proximal aspect of anterior and posterior teeth this is an anterior tooth and on the facial surface the height of contour is on the cervical third and on the lingual surface the height of contour is again on the cervical third but when we talk about posterior teeth on the facial surface the height of contour is on the cervical third but on the lingual surface the height of contour is either on the middle third or occlusal third 